So, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to my talk. My name is Si Xin Huang. Today, I would like to share a, a project, uh, Doctor AI, which is a graph-based medical chatbot. Um, so, the first question is why we do a chatbot uh, at all. So, in the first, in the, in the first place. Uh, it is because we want to have a medical knowledge graph access for everybody. There are more and more knowledge graphs in the healthcare sector. However, only the experts can use them right now uh, because yeah, they need to know how to uh, program in Cypher or the other uh, graph languages. So for people who can neither read nor write, uh, let alone program, the door is shut. Also, there are also people that cannot see very well um, that the visual interaction will be difficult for them. So in this case, a chatbot will be a great help because voice is also faster than typing. So in language uh, such as uh, Chinese, voice can be two to three times faster than typing. There are also scenarios where we cannot use our hands, for example, in the surgical rooms or in some uh, dust-free labs. In addition, there are also there is also an information asymmetry between the patient and doctor. So the doctor normally know more. So that is the reason why we visit doctors in the first place. However, in this information asymmetry, it means that the patients are normally at the disadvantage uh, in this relation because they need to rely on the doctors, uh, the quality and integrity entirely. So uh, we need to let patients know more so that they can make uh, some decisions on their own. And it doesn't mean that we just dump a lot of information onto patient's hand. So uh, there are many medical jargons that are very difficult to understand. So we also need a way to simplify some complex concepts. So, and not only uh, we just want such a system, so it is uh, not only like a digital uh, health record, but we also want to connect the personal uh, medical histories to some public, general, and authoritative knowledge so that you will get the best uh, available known information uh, about the symptoms or the disease or the healthcare prevention measures. So um, we can't just uh, let a chatbot that will uh, improvise to provide all this. So we need to solve all these problems at once. So, uh, and to solve this problem, uh, Doctor AI is our answer. Uh, at the end of two thousand twenty-one, uh, I and four Leon Four J engineers uh, took part in a uh, uh, data fund in Singapore, and our uh, submission is Doctor AI, which is a medical chatbot. And since then, we have refined the chatbot uh, over the year. So it now has several uh, advanced features that can help us to, uh, to interact with a large knowledge graph behind the, uh, behind the scene. So first, let me show you a very quick uh, interface. So this is how it looks like. Uh, so Dr. AI uses uh, the React Simple chatbot an open source project to the uh, as its front end. So in this case, as you can see, uh, user, which is on the uh, right side of the dialogue, uh, can ask questions in uh, English natural languages. So for example, we want to ask which pathogen causes HIV uh, and the drug that treats it. So, and you can see in the red dialogue that is from Dr. AI, which retrieves the information from a knowledge graph and present it back to the user. 
So behind, uh, under the hood, Doctor AI looks like this. So on the right hand side, so it begins at the right hand side. So the users, uh, both doctors and patients, can use this system. Uh, they can either type in the question or they can uh, voice in their questions uh, with the Alan Studio API. So that the question is registered. And once uh, we have that lang uh, the language uh, question, we will send it to GPT-3. And GPT-3 will translate that English question back into a cipher. And that cipher is going to be used to query against the Leon 4J backend. And on the Leon 4J backend, we have integrated uh, four different data sources. So the three data sources, HTONet, KEGG, and String, they are medical and biological knowledge graphs. And the EICU is a, a patient electronic record from the ICU. So as you can see here, the GPT-3 plays a, plays a role as a cipher translator and not as a chatbot. So for example, we cannot ask this chatbot, uh, how about the weather? You can only ask domain specific questions such as uh, the symptom, the disease, uh, the pathogen, the drugs, and so on. The questions that the database can answer. And GPT-3 will only translate your question it would not add, provide its own answer uh, to the uh, to the question, and also later we also use GPT-3 as a literature extraction tool. So we have a lot of uh, medical research paper each year. So we would like to enlarge the knowledge graph, uh, also up to date. So the way we do it is that we can split the literature and then fit it into GPT-3 and let GPT-3 to extract the uh, subject verb object pairs, uh, a triplets, and then this triplets can be imported into Leon4j and make the logic graph uh, up to date. So the core of this technology or this uh, app is actually the natural language understanding engine. Uh, in this implementation, we use the GPT-3 because GPT-3 is a very powerful uh, tool. So um, the core function I mentioned that translate English to Cypher is just one of its uh, magics that we, we use in the uh, Doctor AI. Uh, it can also translate uh, other languages into English. For example, we can translate uh, German, Chinese, and Japanese, as you can see in this slide, into an English question. And then that English question can be further translated into a cipher query. And so GPT, uh, so Dr. AI can actually understand uh, other languages too. But the quality of the answers differ because uh, sometimes GPT-3 uh, didn't translate the question perfectly. Moreover, we can also use GPT-3 to simplify some very long and complicated uh, medical concepts, uh, which I've mentioned in the introduction. It's also a goal, one of the goals we have. So for example, in this case, uh, on the left, uh, you can see the original description of lung cancer, while on the right-hand side is the simplified version from GPT-3. And as you can see, GPT-3 removed a lot of this uh, gene names and such so that the uh, uh, user need not go through uh, all this uh, information and just get the exams of the, the description so that they can uh, understand yeah, what is uh, about lung cancer. And you can actually try GPT-3 yourself uh, with an account. So uh, in our case, we will use GPT-3's uh, playground to demonstrate, for example. Uh, as you can see in this slide, uh, in the playground, uh, at the first big box, so the second paste your English cipher example first. In this big box, we provide a so-called pump. And this pump is um, 
a list of English cipher, English cipher, English cipher examples. Uh, GPT-3 can learn from this list of prompts and then he will understand, uh, okay, so you want something like this. And then after this prompt, we can provide our challenge. So that is the uh, free, your question point. So in that section, we just provide an English question. So uh, tell me something about the disease called COVID-19, for example. And then we can click the generate uh, button. And then GPT-3 will finish these uh, questions very well. And then it will generate the cipher that we need uh, for the interaction in uh, Dr. AI. So in this case, uh, I would like to have a small demo of this app uh, and let's see uh, whether it, it uh, works. So um, so uh, please allow me to have um, So uh, can you please see my screen? Um, so in, um, in this case, I would like to, uh, for example, which uh, drug can treat lung cancer? So the user just entered this question into the, into the, uh, into the, the dialog box. And then the, uh, Dr. AI can answer this question with the information extracted from the database. So also, uh, also we can enter something like uh, EL of I5 COVID-19. So in this case, we want to simplify uh, how uh, the, the, the COVID-19 and this COVID-19 information also comes from the database. Uh, so also the audience can also try that address and see uh, the, the Dr. AI in action themselves. Okay, it takes some time. Okay. So I don't know why. Okay, so uh, in the back end, actually it is uh, just a Leon 4J database, as you can see here. Um, there are uh, five, uh, 550,000 nodes and then 2 million relationships. So uh, it is just a, a normal Leon 4J database that is currently hosted on a uh, RRDB. Uh, and because the relationships are over 400,000, so um, we cannot use the uh, free version. But as you can see in here, the, the nodes are actually, um, are, there are many types of nodes that we want to uh, use to represent the medical knowledge, for example, the disease, genes, pathogen, and diagnosis. So the compounds are the drugs in this case. And then we have also uh, all these uh, informations about uh, which genes are co-expressed and uh, 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 down regulation, up regulation, and so on. So, uh, now let me share this. So, and also we want to, as I have said, uh, we also use the GPT-3 to extract information out of uh, medical literature because every year we have a lot of uh, new papers and they they are uh, very valuable uh, if we can incorporate them into the knowledge graph. And for this purpose, we need the subject, the verb and the object out of uh, sentences and Previously, it is quite difficult to extract relationships from raw text. It is easy to extract the, the nouns, the, the names, but the relationship is very difficult. However, it seems that GPT-3 uh, excels at this task. So in this case, we have like a sentences, a sentence like uh, EGF upregulates MIR31 and so on. 
And in this case, we let the sentences uh, go through the GPT-3 pipeline and then GPT-3 will uh, extract the EGF and MIR31 and also the verb upregulate. Uh, it uh, stimifies the, the verb so that it can fit into our uh, given uh, ontology so and later into our data structure. So in this case, uh, we can then import this uh, triplet into Leon 4J as a graph. So the pipeline looks like this. So we have basically um, a very long article. The first step is that we will need to substitute the pronouns and the uh, acronyms so that the sentences become uh, complete. Uh, Spacey will split the sentences so that uh, we won't fit the whole text into GPT-3. And then uh, Hugging Face will filter the sentences, only sentences with uh, names that we care about will be sent to GPT-3. So, and finally, GPT-3, we just uh, extract the relationships out of the sentence that we can import into Leon 4 so, and once that uh, information can be imported into Leon 4J, we can incorporate this uh, new added knowledge into the existing data. So in this way, we can keep uh, our database up to date. And uh, to be, uh, to uh, let's say, um, actually uh, the Dr. AI is not a uh, like a fixed app. It is more like a framework. So what, what it means is that actually you don't need to use GPT-3 or uh, Amplify or uh, EC2 for this purpose. So um, you can switch the components. For example, if you don't like to use Alan, uh, you can use uh, Google speech to text and so on. And if you have a uh, later, a better uh, natural language understanding engine, you can replace GPT-3 with, um, for example, your gpt Neo and so on. So, um, and uh, here is one of the examples we have is that we use the, uh, M uh, the Alan Studio to replace the whole GPT-3 because Alan Studio, it has its own natural language understanding engine. So, um, and this uh, Doctor AI is a project that has been uh, uh, described many times in the uh, publications. So um, you can check out the details in the following publications. And also the, the code is available uh, freely on GitHub. So um, that's the end of my talk. And I thank you for your attention. Uh, so now I would like to, yeah. Uh, I can answer your questions. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Hall. <laughs> it's a very comprehensive solution and uh, detailed slides. Uh, so based on, uh, there's a question here. Uh, based on your experiences, uh, what would be the biggest challenge uh, to build a such a, a solution? Uh, to deal with such a question, for uh, if on the tech side, it will be um, how can we ensure that um, that the data are correct because especially in medicine, uh, errors can lead to serious consequence. So how can we be sure that the, the data we enter the knowledge graph are unbiased are, and are correct? Mm -hmm. And this is on the tech side. Uh, on the, let's say on the, on the uh, adaption side, it will be, uh, is it allowed? Uh, in the country uh, because of the ethical and legislative uh, reasons. So uh, is it, so for example, what happened if the, the, the app uh, provide a wrong answer and need to consequence? So who mm -hmm. is responsible for this? So basically we have tech problems and also we have like uh, uh, these ethical problems to be, yeah, to solve. Mm. Right. So data quality or accuracy 
uh, yes, and also the the privacy or regulation uh, are probably the challenges for this yes. type of application. Yeah, that's great. And uh, it's curious, just for curiosity, mm -hmm. does this GPT three always work in terms of translating a natural language question into a cipher query? Uh, uh, th that depends really on the prompt. So. Mm. So basically, this is the the examples uh, you provide to GPT three, and in this mode, it is called the few a uh, few shot mode. So uh, you don't want GPT three to provide to improvise uh, things. So you will need to give him some examples to guide him to generate a cipher that mm. uh, is exactly that that uh, suitable to your data structure. So uh, in this case. We will need to provide uh, sufficient uh, this uh, English question cipher English cipher English cipher pairs. Mm -hmm. So then the GPT three uh, during the challenge it can generate the correct cipher. But if you mm -hmm. do not have that examples before, then GPT three will try to guess. But most of the time it will guess something uh, wrong because it uh, doesn't know the data structure in the Leon 4J. Mm. But that right. is our job to uh, actually to provide a comprehensive list of prompt uh, mm -hmm. to GPT-3. But mm. of course, that brings another question because uh, the prompt costs money in GPT-3. So uh, you can either mm. fine tune it uh, that you do not need to provide a prompt later, or you have to have a very concise prompt uh, that you can uh, that it can encompass all the use cases you have so mm. it is a choice between uh yeah you want right. a prompt or a fine tuning right so you, you usually how many prompts or questions uh will be sufficient for training purpose like hundreds of them or thousands of them uh for the fine tuning actually gpd3 suggests at least uh, 500 500. So as long as you have less than that, it's better not to train than to train because uh, you will replace the last layer mm. of the model and the quality will deteriorate, it, uh, deteriorate because uh, your, your, your own chain layer is worse than the default layer. So uh, I suggest if you do not have 500, uh, you will so if you don't do not have 500 English cipher, English cipher pairs, you use the prompt. If you have more than 500, you can consider fine tuning. Right. Cool. Uh, there is another question on the screen. Uh, can you see it? What is yes. the response success rate compared to Google? <coughs> oh, um, the note. Mm. Uh, actually, uh, I do not have like a like a, a systematical test to uh, to have a number on this because uh, uh, on our side it is that we uh, construct the whole pipeline and then see uh, whether it will uh, do what we want. So it is more like a, a user experience thing for us. And uh, in the moment at as long as we see arrows in the translation, we will try to add that arrow back into the prompt so that GPT-3 will not make the same mistake again uh, next time. But uh, this process, so it is an evolving process. As long as you can edit the prompt and make it better, uh, the, the values will also change. So at this moment, we focus only on the on the English to cipher translation. And from our perspective, at the moment, it is very accurate. Um, uh, in, in case there are minor errors, we can provide them as like a new prompt so that uh, the GPT-3 will correct, correctly answer the question next time. So uh, in this case, we do not have like a, te uh, a test to systematically have a, a success rate yet. Uh, it is like a more like a prototype that uh, it can work from end to end. Mm. So, yeah. Thanks. Uh, this, another question 
from Renault to actually two, but I think they can be combined. Um, basic is about asking whether this method or framework yes. can be used for any to become a domain agnostic. Yes. Uh, actually, we, we have discussed this uh, with uh, Leon Forge and, and also Joshua uh, because uh, uh, this is like a, more like a framework. So you can stuck in any data knowledge graph you want. Uh, we have listed some uh, examples, actually. For example, we have a, a biology uh, knowledge graph that is about uh, enzymes that degrade sugars. And then we also plug it into the uh, doctor AI and it works. And also if you have like data from uh, HR, uh, logistic, or maybe in the tourist branch, you can also make it uh, work because uh, you can just uh, replace the prompt. So like uh, in this screen, and then you will have the, uh, the correct translation. So it is very flexible. So you will change the data, you change the prompt, and make sure that GPT-3 will do the translation correctly. So uh, yes, I will, uh, I will say that it will work for uh, any domain. But the data, the, the example you see here is medical because uh, the, the data phone, uh, yeah, it is a medical data phone. So we use the, uh, the data. So that is our, let's say our proof of concept or, or a prototype to show you that uh, this framework can work. Cool. And the third one from the same person, we know. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the, okay, first of all, the uh, English to Cypher translation, uh, you can uh, have the whole list in uh, either my GitHub or the article I've listed. So, uh, and, and if you like, I will also, I can also send you. Uh, this is uh, the, the translation actually relies on the prompt. So in this screen, it is the second point, paste your English Cypher example first. Uh, that list is, yes, it is handcrafted uh, by the developer. So uh, you can add your own uh, cipher pairs. So uh, if you have new data, surely you will also have to design your own prompts. Uh, but that will not be the issue because GPT-3 will figure out uh, the similar questions. So it will translate it uh, also uh, into the correct cipher. And if you have uh, experience with uh, AWS Lex or maybe uh, Alan, uh, they work in the same way, actually. You give him one example, and then the natural language understanding engine will be able to figure out all the similar questions and will converge all the translation into that one correct cipher. So um, you just need to provide some uh, examples. And like I said, uh, if you see errors, you incorporate the errors, correct the answer and put it back into the prompt so that uh, GPT-3 will not make the same mistake again. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I can, I can understand it. And I think Avinod is definitely on fire. He has the fourth question for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, uh, I have provided a uh, 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 both a live version, the Git, and the uh, the, the publications um, uh, in Medium. So uh, please, uh, op just please contact me, and and I can send all the links uh, at once through email. Yeah, I think dot, dot AI is fully open source, right? And has a you yeah. have multiple versions on AWS on GCP, right? Different versions. Uh, yes, versions. you can. As I said. Uh, the platform is actually uh, is not vendor login. Uh, in fact, you can uh, host your Leon Forge either your own on your own, or you can do it like uh, on Aura DB Pro, mm. and you can change your front end from Amplify to Firebase, or even your own uh, front end. So, and just the natural language understanding engine, that is the difficult part because mm -hmm. there are not so many uh, public available engines nowadays. 
so GPT-3 and GPT-NEO are the two, so the boost AI. But uh, but we will expect more because uh, Meta, DeepMind, um, they are all have their they will all have their own uh, NLU engines in the future, and if they release it, uh, we will think uh, we will have uh, yeah even more choices. So you can replace any of these components as you like, and the data, of course, you can change the data. Hmm. Excellent. Uh, do you mind moving to the slide which has which has the uh, yes, here is the your orig original article on uh, Medium. And also, do you mind switching to the slide which you have the uh, the GitHub link? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is an incomplete list, uh, of course. Uh, uh, we have like a, a live demo link and so on. Uh, because the live demo link, uh, uh, I change it uh, sometimes before, uh, be before I, I can uh, uh, prepare this slide. So um, if uh, anybody who is interested uh, can, can drop me a note, I can send him the, the live link. And also you can host it yourself actually. Uh, there are enough instructions on these articles that can help you step by step to uh, yeah to to make your own doctor AI. Hmm. 